Welcome to a screencast from Michael Pavletich on MX14 um, running first of all from a system back live image created earlier uh, and using the installer to get it installed on a hard drive. Let's get started. For those of you who have seen MX you might have noticed the um, that all of the goodness of the the MX Grub boot configurations uh, and highly customizable options are gone. That's just one, one of the things that you get with System Bag, but it does give you an ability to create your very own distribution uh, suited to yourself. So you can almost make a backup of your favorite system, but my recommendation is to do it when you haven't got data on there. Right, let's get started with our password. Of course, uh, you'll notice that the, the login name here is owner, uh, and the password in this particular case is just a mix-up of the word owner that I've made up for the sake of the live image that we've got. When, you, when you're running MX, uh, the, pass, the username's demo and the password is demo, and, um, uh, and the, the root is, uh, is root. In this case here, we, the passwords have been set completely differently. So whatever I used on my reference system, which was a little uh, Lenovo E330 laptop, the passwords were retained when I created this image. And of course the desktop that I had on there was also retained. And these are the desktops I have. So uh, for those of you that, seen it there, that have seen MX before, this is quite a vastly different version of MX. It's not the stock standard. I have got a highly modified kit that I use. And uh, at work, I use Gparted a lot. I use Smart Control, G Smart Control to monitor hard disks. Um, I am I am playing with some of the MX tools, which is a, a new thing coming out with MX. I'm not going to display that right now. Um, I have the uh, I have the uh, volume control here for Pulse Audio, and I do a lot of double screening. So I use GR and R for that double screening. So these are just the icons I have on the desktop. But what I want to do now is get started with the Petitioner because it, um, the system back installer does not have its built-in Petitioner. So it's going to type in my password which is just root and reverse, T-O-O-R. And this is an example that I did beforehand showing the, um, showing the Petition layout. So I'm just going to go ahead and pretty much format all those. All those. So reformat 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 oops there it is, xt4 and swap we don't have to worry about so we're going to start with a blank slate now you notice this is only a 10 gigabyte virtual drive here so we don't have a lot of room and um, it looked quite full well that's because the I've made so many changes to the MX system uh, oops I hit the wrong button there I've made so many changes to the MX system that uh, the installed installed size is about 5.23 gigs, but it does include KDE. Now my mouse is playing up here at the moment. No, it's just a pad I was on. I'd gone off the pad altogether. Okay, so I'm now using a whole different mouse pad here. Starting the system back and the password. And the full name of the new full name of the new user. Test and test again. Account password one two three four one two three four the root password four three two one four three two one and the host name we'll call it uh, VMK. Really not that concerned about what we're going to use for the host name. Next, and we see the petitions we had before. So this one here, the, you've got the option with the system back installer to choose multiple petitions and break your system up into all sorts of areas. So in this case, we'll go SDA1, we'll make that for root. There we go. Um, I'm not going to worry about formatting it because we've just formatted it just now. So I'm going to turn the format off and I'm going to save the change with this button here. SDA2, we'll make that home. No format. Save. SDA3. Now here's where things get a bit different because what I want to do with SDA3 is I want to make it a dedicated petition for the system back um, the system back images that can be created or the, the rollbacks which we'll show you later on. But for now I'm just going to type in where I want it to go. Home, S-O-S-T-E-M-B-A-C-K. Now you notice 
that the system back that I typed in kind of breaks with the Linux tradition of having all lowercase names. That's particular to system back. It's just one of those things, and there's no uh, there's no way around that. But you can actually type in your mount point. So if you have um, have a hard drive somewhere else, maybe a second hard drive, it's entirely possible just to type the type the mount points in and uh, swap. Which there's no I don't think there's an option to to format swap. There it is. We make it swap. Apply that and. That looks like that looks like it. So we've got root on ext4, home ext4, home system back on ext4, and swap. Great. Transfer user configuration files. Now, a lot of this particular settings that we've got with the um, with the reference system that I built this on, I have made a lot of configurations to those files. So I actually want to keep those. Now, when I do that, that does create a problem at the other end, but it's very very minor and very easy to fix. So we'll show you that later. So let's get it. Go ahead and start the installer now. And uh, while the installer starts, I'm just going to pause the recording. Okay, that saved us about two minutes of time. So I'll press OK on there. So with the system installed, let's go ahead and um, and reboot. And restart. And there we have the boot prompt. Now notice running live, the background was white, and running from hard disk, the background is now black. And we're at the login prompt. Now while we were running live, we were using a user whose username was owner. Owner no longer exists because we're now running from a hard drive installation. So what we need to do now is change that to the user that we created. So that was test, in the password was one, two, oops, one, two, three, four. So all the icons we had on the desktop, they have not been transferred, but the rest of the user configuration files have. Now, because this is a modified version, it's a very highly modified version of MX, I've included KDE. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log out and log into the KDE screen, uh, the KDE system, where there needs to be some fixes made to Dolphin, which is a file browser. So choose a KDE, Plasma Workspace, and one, two, three, four, off we go. Now, as KDE loads, one of the things it does very early on in the cycle is it will identify sound devices that have been removed. So don't be surprised when you see that. And I'm using the netbook interface on here. And we'll start Dolphin. So Dolphin is going to try and open at a place called Home Owner. But of course Home Owner does not exist. There's that screen we were talking about. So I don't need to say that again. Out of there. And uh, we can change it very simply by clicking on Settings, Configure Dolphin, and we just change it here to the right path. Owner, T-E-S-T, -E Apply, OK, out of there, and when we go back into Dolphin, we are at the home. But there's still one more fix to do. We've got this shortcut here as well, and we click on that, what do you know, Home Owner does not exist. So right click, edit entry, and just change that. TST, and press OK. Click on there now, and that is corrected. That's about the only fixes that need to be made when you're running from system back. So there we have it, nice and simple. That system back out now installed. Now I just want to show you, remember in the partitioning, we had those uh, partition layouts? So we'll go back in Dolphin now. We'll make that full screen so we can see a little bit better. We have 1.1 gigabytes free. This is in the home. So let's go somewhere else. We'll go to the, the root drive. 700 megs free. Remember it was only a 10 gig hard drive. There's our home. And there's our system back partition. 
which has got 1.5 gigs free. If we click on home here, go up a level, there's a system back there. So I do like to keep system images separate from, uh, from my user data when I'm doing my backups and the likes, and normally I don't have these things hidden. I actually also label my hard drives, so these things come with a nice label as opposed to um, just what you see there. So let's have a look at system back just briefly. System back, and it doesn't really matter how we run it as long as we run it. Maybe I didn't actually get it to run that time. Let's try again. And tour. So the screen's a little bit different when we're running this. Of course, wrong password. I changed that password. So here we have an option to um, to create a restore point, and the restore point will be created in the system back folder. Now there's actually not enough room in the little partition that I made here, so you probably want to have, um, if you want to have multiple restore points, they're equ uh, roughly equivalent to two thirds the size of your installed system, and the restore points generally cr take or um, take a live snapshot of all of your folder systems and write a copy of them into the system back folder that we saw earlier on. So we're not going to do that right now, but if you, example, if you had a system with, that had an installed size of uh, 3 gigabytes, then expect about 2 gigabytes per image. So you can imagine 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 2, 4, 6, 8. You need at least 40 gigs to have enough room to have all of these restore points full. But it's very handy if you're a tinkerer like I am, you can create a restore point, you mess it up, go back nice and easy. Of course there's also the live system create, which is how we created the image in the first place. And you've got a few things here as well that you can play with, but um, I'll let you discover those in your own time. Okay, that's it for me. Thanks very much for watching.